It was Michael Jordan who screwed all this up. In 1996, his Chicago Bulls became the first team to ever win 70 games. They went 72-10 and 10 that year. And they adopted the slogan, it don't mean a thing if you don't get that ring. What a ridiculous message that is. Except what they seem to have done is spoken it into complete truth. Jordan himself is measured, it seems, by and only by his six rings. Listen, folks, I covered Michael Jordan for seven years. I saw him do unbelievable things on the basketball court every single night. Many of his greatest games and many of the greatest memories did not come in the finals. I saw them. They mattered. So when Mike D'Antoni, who is the coach of the Rockets, who have scratched and bled and clawed for eight months to put together a brilliant regular season, when he says he thinks that should count for something, he's right. How do we get to this place where the regular season is completely meaningless? If it didn't matter, why did you ask us to watch and to care about what we saw? It's the same mentality that gave us the NCAA tournament, which is a great event, but it's a ridiculous way to decide a champion. It renders basically everything that came before it unimportant. For example, Virginia. They had a brilliant season, the best season in the country. And they had one bad night, and that's all that anyone will ever remember of them. It doesn't make sense. So, whatever happens from here on out, don't knock Mike D'Antoni for what he said, because he happens to be absolutely right. I say that, and I duck. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Have at me. T tell me why I'm out of my mind. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Actually, I agree with you. Oh, for the love of oh. everything that's holy. I just made up for everything you what? said in the first part. <laughs> the, and here's, Did it? Here's, why, here's why I agree with you, because organizations and greatness wins championships. You go up to players, any player that played in the NBA that has multiple rings, you should ask them, what is it like to be around Pat Riley? What kind of guy is Greg Popovich? Hi, what kind of guy is Shaq and Kobe? Because greatness is what puts you in a position to win championships. Same in football. What kind of guy is Belichick if you got two or three rings? How is it like to know Joe, Joe Montana? So once you play, people start to diminish everything that you've accomplished based on the end result. We just said it with Russell Westbrook. This guy averaged triple doubles in back-to-back -back seasons. That's a phenomenal feat. He's a champion in my eyes. The playoffs are starting. Will they win the championship? No. But I can't say that I had any more joy watching a player this year than I have with Russell Westbrook. That's a great participation. I'll give you a participation <laughs> trophy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 I'll give you a participation my trophy. Love. Listen, I, I think the reason that it, it matters with Houston is because look at last year with James, with James Harden. You're talking about in the conference semis. This guy scored 10 points. That's the one thing that, that I'll remember about James. James Harden's been phenomenal. He's probably going to win the MVP. But a lot of people still had game six conference semifinals yep. last year in their mind where he was literally, he was on the back of a milk cart. Like, no one, we st we're still looking for him as far as the playoffs are concerned. Chris Paul hasn't even made it out of the conference semis. So we're talking about two, like, two of the elite players in the NBA. And you're telling me that, oh, well, their accomplishments and records, oh, man, it, getting a ring is not, is not, the, you know, not the biggest thing in the world. No, they need to make things happen this year. Forget all the stuff about the regular season. They need to make things happen this year. I, I understand where you're coming from, but this is a fan and media creation where we dismiss everything that has happened. I, I don't think we're dismissing. I'm not dismissing. We're not dismissing. I'm not dismissing James Harden's season. But there is season. a more important aspect. I mean, it is an industry based on competition with one person, one team standing at the top of the mountain when it's all said and done. And they are. Right now, and they are. It, they, they had are. the best. Right over now. 82 games, they were the best team in the league. All I'm trying to say is that means something. I know sure, it doesn't mean not, everything. Not much. But not, not compared to the whole thing. That, I don't agree with you. We're going to do a story coming up in a little while that NBA regular season ratings were up. Everyone is watching. Everyone's interested because it matters. These games matter, and I feel like they matter we're going to... matter for entertainment to... purposes, but when it's all said and done, we're going to care about who wins the whole thing. All right, let me give you a different way to look at it. Loyola Chicago didn't win the NCAA tournament. They waited to the Final Four. That's a victory. That's a championship. And so what ends up happening in sports is I like to gauge success off of realistic expectations. And so the Cleveland Cavaliers, the San Antonio Spurs, the Golden State Warriors, if those three teams don't win the championship, they're not going to consider this a great season. But if the Raptors make it to the finals, if the Houston Agreed. Rockets make it to the finals, if the Philadelphia 76ers make it to the conference finals, and they so we're going to so celebrate you, that so, as a great year. So you're saying the Houston Rockets, it's, it's not realistic for them to win the championship this year? It is realistic to win the championship. So why shouldn't we hold they, to that they, they have a potential number one uh, seed. They have the number one seed. 
They have an MVP candidate. But if they beat the Warriors, it's like a team beating UConn no. in the Final Four. We don't even pay attention to who they beat in the Final Four. I don't think there's a big I'm going to stay on the winning side of this table for this one. Okay. I'm gonna jump, I got to jump How many back championships here. you won? Let's take a so look at the Rockets. So many in life. Yeah. Let's look at all of them. The Rockets, no matter how far they go in the playoffs, <laughs> we'll have to get through the Timberwolves five. to begin, guys. So this is the first time the Timberwolves have been in the playoffs yes. in 14 years. These teams faced each other four times this year. Rockets won all of them by an average no. of 15. Let's give you a big stat here according to Second Spectrum. James Harden has shot just mm. 33% over the mm. last three seasons when Jimmy Butler was covering him. Mm. That's 11% worse than his average over that span. Hembo digging for numbers and finding I big like ones. I like that, Hembo. So, Jalen, how big a factor is, we see the stat, Jimmy Butler's defense on Harden? It's a big factor, but let me tell you something you do when you're the coach on the other side. Pick and roll, get Jimmy Butler off. Jimmy, stagger pick and roll, get him to switch. What you've watched from the Houston Rockets, when you see Chris Paul taking it through another player's legs, that's a center. When you see James Harden crossing over Wesley Johnson, that was after a switch. All you have to do is do a stagger pick and roll, and all of a sudden someone else is guarding him other than a primary defender, which is Jimmy Butler, who's done a terrific job on him. I think it's a legitimate question, though, Beetle, going back to our previous conversation. There is extraordinary pressure on Harden and 100%. on Paul, right? On yep. those two guys yep. because of their past Also, on, I would actually argue also on Jimmy Butler. We were talking last night about the last time, because had Timberwolves not made it in, obviously the drought would have gone on. But there was only one other team in recent history with two All-Stars that didn't make the playoffs, and it was the Bulls, and it was the Bulls team that Butler was on. So even though he's been telling everyone, oh, I don't feel the pressure, this is fine, it's a game, we'll be good. He's got a lot of pressure on him, too, because at some point you start to look and go, what is the common denominator between teams that can't seem to get it done? Oh, Jimmy Butler's there. So, I, like, for me, the backstory that comes along with all these guys, the characters, the storyline, it is so fascinating to me. They all have their own individual types of pressure on them. 